Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mount Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click on that bell icon down below so you can get notified when I come out with new tutorials. Okay, action sheets work differently on iPads than they do on iPhones. In this video, we're gonna cover some options you have when it comes to action sheets on iPads. By the end of this video, you'll have a good grasp on what you need to do to show action sheets on iPads. This is the second video on action sheets. In the first video, we covered how to create and display action sheets on an iPhone. So if you haven't seen that, then watch it now, because we're gonna be building on things that were taught in that first video. Okay, so let's jump into our Xcode project and let's run it on an iPad simulator and let's see what happens right now when we try to pull up this action sheet. So we're in our Xcode project and here's the code that we use to pull up the action sheet from before. We created a new UI alert controller, we added some actions to it, and then we presented it. So I have the simulator set to one of the iPad Pros, the 9.7 inch. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, I click on the trip, and then I click on this plus icon down here, and boom, we get an error. So if you ever get an error, you can just scroll up here in this console and then read what's above all of this stuff right here, this call stack. And basically, this is what you wanna pay attention to. Is this right here. So it says, you must provide location information for this popover through the alert controller's popover presentation controller. You must provide either a source view and source rect or a bar button item. So basically what happens is the action sheet no longer covers the whole screen for iPads. It only covers part of the screen and it points to some place that you clicked on. And that's what it doesn't know. It doesn't know what you clicked on, so it doesn't know what to point to. So that's what we have to tell it. Okay, so let's go back here. And I think we'll just do it right here. And remember it mentioned the popover presentation controller? So that's what we have to reference here. This is what's responsible for showing our action sheet. And then we have to tell it the source view, like what did we click on or what do you want to point to? So we just have to define the source view. Now in this case, we already have an outlet for our add button, so we can use that right here. And that's our floating action button right there. If you don't have an outlet, then maybe you're using a function like an action outlet, and the sender is usually what you tapped on. So a lot of times you can just use the sender too. Like if we wanted to, we could just change this to sender. And that's the same thing, it's that floating action button. So we'll run it and see what it looks like. Okay, not bad. At least we're not getting an error now. But take a look at that pointer. Notice that it's not quite pointing to the button. I mean, it's pointing to the button, but it could be better, right? Okay, so what's happening is the arrow is pointing to the origin of the frame of the button by default. The origin is the X and Y coordinate of where the UI view exists inside its parent. We want the button to be more in the center of the button's frame. Luckily, iOS gives us a way to do this so we can specify where the arrow will actually point to inside the UI view that we specified. And we're going to do that with the source rect. So the source rect property allows us to define an area, or more accurately, a rectangle, for the action sheet to point to inside of the view that we already specified. So looking here at our button, we already set the source view property. Now what we wanna do is we want to define a rectangle inside that source view. So I think we wanna put a rectangle about here in the middle. And I'll show you how to do that here. So let's go back into our project and let's see how we can do this. Okay, and there's our source rect property. And then this is a CG rect. So what we can do is we can just use the bounds. So the bounds is a CG rect that's inside of our view. And there's one thing I need to warn you guys about. The bounds has an origin of zero, zero. That's very important because if we use frame, which is also a CG rect, the origin there, the X and Y, actually has a value. It's basically, it's an X, Y coordinate that puts it all the way down in the lower right-hand corner. So if we use the frame, it's gonna put our action sheet even further down, starting from our button 
So it's going to be off the screen. So we want to use bounds because the origin starts at 0, 0 inside of our source view, which is our button. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a lot better. Notice how it's pointing in the middle. So we give it a CG rect that's inside of that view of our button. And it's the same size of our button. And it will point directly to the middle. Now you notice it looks like the arrow kind of goes inside or under the button. So what can we do to raise it up or to more fine tune where it's actually pointing? Because sometimes you might have a view where you want the arrow pointing somewhere else, not maybe directly in the center and not directly in the corner where it was before. So in that case, what we can do is just make our own CG rect. So instead of using the bounds, we'll just create a new CG rect. And we'll use the one with the float. Okay, now we still want to keep it in the center, right? We just want to raise it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at zero. And then for the Y, that determines how far up or down it goes. I'll give it like a negative four to push it up. And for the width, we want the same width that we have for our rectangle before. And for the height, I really don't care how high it is. So I can keep that at zero. There we go. So notice the arrow, it was pushed up a little bit. So that's another way you can do it. Somewhere inside of your source view, you can define a source rect to help better pinpoint where that arrow is pointing. Okay, that's it for this video. So you learned about setting the source view so the action sheet knows where to point to when you're using an iPad. You also learned how to fine tune where the arrow is pointing by using a source rect inside of the source view. All right, thanks guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it on social media like Twitter. And if you do share it on Twitter, you know, feel free to tag me. My handle is right down there, Big Mountain Studio. Subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, you can provide a translation for the title in the description in your native language. And that'll help people in your country find this video. Thanks, guys. And keep climbing that big mountain to be a great developer.